in this video I want to show you how to draw this pattern which can be drawn on an isometric grid I'll explain what that is in a second but I've drawn it loads of times I've painted it loads of times and when I've taught it I must say people really enjoy it I describe it as being simple and the reason being is you can just break those shapes down into shapes that are made up of equilateral triangles so this is an equilateral triangle if you look at this shape, this is a rhombus and it's made up of two equilateral triangles. And the third shape that's involved in this pattern is this uh, kind of roof shape and it's made up of one, two and three um, equilateral triangles. So for me, that's quite a simple breakdown of shapes. They all have the same angles made up of 60 degrees or multiples of 60 degrees. Anyway, we don't need to kind of worry about that too much, but they're made up of equilateral triangles. Um, the pattern in its original form comes from this madrasa and many others, actually, here's another one, that I saw in Uzbekistan. And um, I got this photo from David Wade's photo archive um, on, wait, let's say it's uh, www.patternsinislamicart.com. I use that website a lot. It's an excellent resource of these photos that David's collected together. Okay, so the video that I'm actually drawing from, so you can go by this or you can also look at number 23 on my YouTube. And the radius that I'm going to go for, just because it fits um, nicely on this paper, which is A4 paper, is 3 centimeters. So I'm going to begin with my horizontal line. Um, again, I'm just measuring it by eye. And then I am measuring using centimetres the centre. Um, because I'm using felt tips, everything needs to be cleaned a million times. And we're going to begin with the centre at the circle. Placement is so important. And you have got to draw a whole bunch of circles. So your precision and the care you take with every single circle will minimise any gaps or any overlaps that occur. I'm getting away with it because I'm using a very thick pen. But this is not what I normally draw with. This is just for teaching and for video purposes. I use big chunky pens to disguise my mistakes. But I'm going to start with a line of circles on the horizontal. So there's one centre one, two to the left and two to the right. And whatever I'm going to do at the bottom, I'm going to repeat at the top. So can you see these intersections at the bottom of this shape, which is called a Pisces vesica? AKA the fish's bladder. <laughs> I love that translation. And we're going to draw four circles. And every single time placement is important. And this is relatively um, big in terms of drawing these circles. Or is it small? Oh, who knows? But yeah, you could draw these a lot smaller. So you can see the beginnings of a shape, like half a hexagon. We're going to do the same at the top. And there are a number of ways you can draw an isometric grid. Um, this is one of them. And even when you've drawn a whole uh, bunch of circles like this, you can still draw a number of different isometric grids on different scales. So I'll show you two alternatives um, that you can draw from this initial drawing. Oh, I've got a gap, guys. Oh, so tight. Oh. Okay, got away with it. So this could lead to quite large triangles. So you can see in that hexagon there's going to be six. It could lead to uh, very tiny ones. So in that one hexagon, there's oh so many. Each one's been divided into nine further triangles. So you can scale it accordingly. But the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to start with a pair of vertical lines. And once you've got the vertical lines in place, hopefully the rest will follow. And I'm going to start in the middle and kind of, once I've got an idea of what it is that I'm drawing, um, the rest kind of follows because it all is in harmony. So the first triangle, hopefully, is 
coming together will be in the centre and it's going to be part of a six pointed star at the centre as well. And there's one, two, three, four points to line up. So can you see that triangle that is on every corner? That's going to be the, the scale I'm working at. And so to break that hexagon into its triangles, I'm going to put in the two extra lines needed. Three extra lines needed, obviously. So can you see now one, two, three, four, five, six triangles, and then there's six on the tips. And that gives you your sets of parallel lines, parallel lines even. So they're going to be vertical parallel lines. There's going to be parallel lines all in this gang. So they're 30 degrees from the horizontal and then this gang. So in a way, what you could do is just slide your ruler along, ruler, ruler along, can't speak, and add in the lines. And you kind of can see that the intersections appear um, and you're using always the corners, oh, sorry, that sounds wrong. You always where the circles intersect one another, um, and that is a bit of a giveaway. So then you can get the same thing. So if you see an intersection like this and like this, is that a circle hitting a circle? No, it is not. So therefore, don't use that point. It's going to be circles intersecting circles. And the word isometric, metric meaning measure, and iso meaning the same, it's used in many different contexts. But the words, if you break down their meaning in the original form, it means same distance or same measure. So each line has to be the same distance away from, each corner on the isometric grid has to be the same distance away from other corners, hence the circles. Because every point on the circle is the same distance from the centre. I said that way too quickly. You could carry on and on and on, which I am doing. Now let's do one more on this side. So this gang is complete. Okay. And I built them from the center outwards um, in that direction. So I'm going to do the same in this direction. And again, be careful of those false points that are intersections from just lines hitting the circle on its uh, edge. It's got to be somewhere in there, a circle hitting a circle. And you start seeing the same shape, you start recognising the distances, your eye kind of, through the just the process of seeing it so many times, gets better at spotting where it should go. And there's more intersections, the more the grid you should draw, there's more intersections. All of that said, it can get confusing, and it does get confusing. <laughs> so there's no harm, there's no escaping sometimes the, the what, what am I looking at? Too many lines, trauma. Okay, so this bottom half is done, top half to go. Let's see. I love it when the grid's complete. I can say my really beautiful, and the underlying grid is complete. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so the underlying grid is complete. And on this, we are going to draw patterns that will enable us or the tile that will enable us to draw this, okay? So what we're going to concentrate on is the bit that's being repeated. So if you look, there's a six-pointed star broken down into six rhombi here, and there's the same there. So if you were to make a tile that is from the center of each of those stars to the other center, with that at the center, then that is something that you can repeat. Okay, Okay. so we're going to attach the masking tape. We don't need to cover the whole grid. I've got two pieces here from my dodgy first attempt that's sitting here. I did it in a really strange order, so I'm doing it again for you. Okay, so this is the pattern that we're going to end up drawing. And you can see it's one large hexagon, then another hexagon, and the start at the centre. And if we count from the centre outwards, it's as though we're going through one, two three, four um, hexagons, um, sorry, triangles. So then that will give us the width. 
So I'm going to find that piece first and put that in. Okay. And then once you see that, you're going to draw in the rest of the hexagon. And then we're going to draw the one that's just inside it. Again, we could have done this in one go. This is not the only way or the only order to do it in. Okay, and we're going to put in the lines that are through the hexagon. And then finally, we need our six pointed star. This is the only time we leave a gap in the lines. Every other time there'd been a continuous line. And by leaving this gap, that's how you get the six pointed star. And the six pointed star itself is made up of six rhombus shapes that are all connected to one another. But if you went straight through, you just turn them into triangles. And we don't want that. We want this shape. So there we have it, this pattern. And um, I want to show you a few more. One thing I want you to note about this is the actual outline of the pattern. Uh, the hexagon is part of the pattern. Those lines are in the pattern. They make up the shapes, okay? And when those lines are not present, so let me show you another example. And I'm going to be a little bit of a typical teacher. I'm not going to give you the full answer to everything here. So if you want to freeze or pause the video, then you can draw these and then see how they repeat and try and make the prediction. So if this tile's next to another hexagon, and another hexagon, what's going to happen at the corner? What's going to happen at the sides? The sides are like mirror lines, so whatever you see on this side will be reflected there. So, for example, this shape, if it's reflected from a diamond, oh gosh, did I say diamond? From a triangle, it will become a rhombus, okay? But what will happen at the corners? So this is an Islamic geometric pattern, and I'm going to reference them with links to um, the Patterns in Islamic Art website so you can see what they look like from the um, examples in architecture. So that's number two. Here's another one. This is very much my um, video for the Zalij patterns. Uh, I think number 23. Oh, I love a bit of handwriting. So again, the crosses indicate they're the corners of this hexagonal tile in an invisible tool that will enable you to tile the pattern. But if you were to draw that hexagon's edge in, it's not part of the pattern. I can't emphasize it enough. I see it so many times on the older uh, social media. Um, people just draw this in and then repeat the pattern and it's not always uh, part of the pattern. Okay. So again, visualize what's going to happen on the other side. What shape is that going to become? What's going to happen at the corner when this will meet two other hexagons? So again, pause as you wish. We've got more. This is another one of my favourites from the Fatipur Sikri. No, no, no. It's from Ittimada Dola in Agra, um, sometimes called the, Mus the Mausoleum of Ittimada Dola, the mini Taj Mahal. There should be a cross here. Let's add it in. So again, this, when this tiles, what's going to happen here? This is the first one with rotational symmetry. So when you reflect it, actually, um, you will get this shape it will repeat beautifully but you won't get a mirror reflection here um it's really fun really enjoyable and there's many in this family okay so back to being symmetry in terms of mirror symmetry this one can you notice the hexagonal tiles a little bit bigger and notice also it doesn't land actually on a corner it's in the very center of one of the smallest triangles but this, when it's repeated, will give you yet another different pattern. And notice you've got this triangle here. Imagine with another and another tri um, hexagonal tile meeting here. What shape are you going to get here? And you can see underneath in the grid what it might be. A larger triangle. Okay. Now, what we're coming across now is a bit of a problem that the tile's getting bigger and bigger. And if you were to tile this on A3 paper, you might get a little bit stuck because you'll fall, off, um, fall out of space fall out of space, fall off the page. So here, it's the very same pattern. However, it's much smaller. And I did start off with the same grid, but I added lines. So I'm gonna do that now. And what you've got to do is add a whole bunch of lines in one direction, in the other direction, and in the other direction. 
And the way they're going to work is they're always going to go through the corners of the existing triangles. Okay. Once you start seeing it, hopefully it'll make sense. And I'm only going to do half because otherwise I'll be here forever, guys. And I think I haven't had my lunch. Dedication. Okay, so you can see it's kind of coming together. And one of the reasons that I don't use pen for drawing is if I hold it down, it blobs. Okay, so that's the ones at that angle. Okay, I'm going to do the ones now that are horizontal. And again, I'm only going to do a few of them because I've got one that I've done already. And what you're looking for are your lines, your parallel lines to become rhombus shapes. And then once they become rhombus shapes, your final set of parallel lines will turn them into uh, turn them into triangles. One more and then I'm going to do the third set. And the third set will be like so. Now, drawing many lines for many of us is actually a really enjoyable activity. But say you wanted to do this activity with children or you don't want to draw the triangles, you can print off an isometric grid. I'll show you in a second. But once you do this for the whole thing, you end up with this. Now, my circles were black here, but it's the same principle. And then you can kind of draw the same patterns but just at a smaller scale and here you can see what's happening in the corners of this pattern is turning into triangles that's an extra line boo boo <laughs> but that's another pattern so i'm not going to give you all the answers i'm not going to give you everything that they can be drawn i want to give you a bit of an idea a bit of a taste so you can explore because that pleasure i don't like to take away from people it's something i enjoyed as a teacher it's something i still enjoy like giving people a little bit of an idea and then see what they do with it okay so this is a really useful <laughs> thing to have if you want to get started with the exploration an isometric gridded paper that you can buy you can print off if you've got any kids in school or know anyone in school teachers and so on this is typically something you'd have in the maths department okay so all of this can be done by hand it can also be done you know with a prepared grid but it will lead to a whole bunch of patterns so the ones i've showed you and a few more the last thing i want to show you is tiling the pattern so last step this tile i'm going to tile in this orientation this is narrower okay than this so when i tile it i'm going to make sure i'll do it like this so that i don't end up with like a tiny gap here so if i did it like this and you see that's wider and therefore these will be closer to the edge so i'm going to do it in this orientation i want to center it as well so what you'll find with a four paper is it fits exactly on a three paper in terms of half the size so if you were to line it up with the edges okay and then use the edge of the paper as a guide the fold that i just did at the center there i learned this from somebody who'd attended a book binding class my understanding is book binders use their hands as measuring tools a lot more than the rest of us and so it's something that's very useful so that should be a very gentle line so this is going to be turned over okay and like i said the orientation is important just so that i don't end up falling off the page i'm going to tape it down with my masking tape i'm going to nick this one actually and then using my spoon i'm going to rub it okay i think speedy video time as well
Okay, so your grid is ready. I would delete, sorry, delete, erase this guideline because it's only there to get it straight on the page. Go over anything that you think might need a bit of darkening. And then my favourite technique is to paint almost up to the pencil lines and then erase them once everything is dry. The reason being I can put the same shapes or shapes next to each other in the same colour and that gap allows them to remain as individual shapes and not merge into one another. So therefore maintaining their integrity. And it allows me to be a little bit more free with my colours. So I can put these two next to each other and still know they're two shapes. And it's one of my favourite things to do. Anyway, enjoy. And um, yeah, thank you for watching.